Hello and welcome to another episode of Linux Lads. This is episode 116. This is Connor and I'm joined by Mike and Amlet. Mike, apparently Ubuntu Pro is advertising in its package manager. So that itself is not new. Uh, that's been there for a long time. I've just, uh, you know, when I was doing research what to do for this episode, I, I we kind of go through the, through the news for the last few you know, through the last few pages on, on some sites, and uh, I saw this article on uh, OMG Ubuntu. According to this article, people get annoyed when they run that uh, GUI updater in uh, 2204 in the LTS and uh, see packages that are suggested as updates, but they can't install them unless they sign up for Ubuntu Pro. I Try to reproduce it both with 2204 and with 2310 in a virtual machine. I couldn't get it. Uh, I, I, it didn't show up for me. Uh, it's possible that it detects a virtual machine or I don't know, maybe I did something wrong or maybe you have to wait a little bit after install. I'm not sure. Uh, what I do know is that when you run it in a server, you get these, uh, what do they call the ESM uh, message, basically. It just tells you if you pay, if you give, if you, if you sign up for Ubuntu Pro, you can get these extra packages. Now, us in the know, who've heard about this for a long time, so the Ubuntu Pro, what it does, basically, you know, you have uh, different repos for Ubuntu. You have uh, you have uh, the main repo where there is, like, Ubuntu maintained uh, open source software. You have restricted, where you get uh, non-open source software that ships with Ubuntu. And then you get universe and multiverse. Uh, universe is community-supported open source software for which... Canonical say they do best effort for uh, what you call for security updates. But if you get Ubuntu Pro, they will give you the maintenance for, I think, up to 10 years, right? So you get 10 years of security updates, even for the universe packages, which, uh, and you don't have to, you know, if you're, if you just have like five PCs, you don't actually have to pay for it. It's for free, but it does confuse people because People who don't know about this, they see that they have some uh, pending security updates and they are unable to install them. And they don't necessarily know what Ubuntu Pro is. So Mm. the question is, and, you know, the question is, what do you guys think about this? I also put another example of, uh, in the show notes, uh, there's a picture, basically just a screen grab from what you do when you get a NPM package installed. And it will also tell you that there are packages that are looking for funding and also count vulnerabilities, kind of a slightly different approach, but it's still using the package manager uh, to maybe ask for something, to doing some maybe advertising, marketing, announcement, something that is outside of the scope of what you would necessarily uh, think that a package manager should do. Now, like, is it okay because windows had us all desensitized uh or desensitized whatever i can't say that word so windows basically made everybody so numb to it uh with with all those adverts uh that like you know who cares about a little uh you know a little much more subtle advertising or is it still a problem because this is exactly why we like linux that it doesn't do this kind of stuff or somewhere between for me, um, I believe before now it's it was for extended support. So they're like, uh, you have an LTS. An LTS means that you're going to get four years of, of package support, uh, which was the traditional model. If you want to support beyond that, guess what? We have a new LTS and you just upgrade to that and then continue on like that. But for whatever reason, due to hardware requirements or, or peripheral that you've plugged into, that's the, the drivers are uh, been built on your LTS and you want to, don't want to go through the hassle of, of rewriting the driver or whatever, they're like, oh, uh, you can just keep paying us and we'll just continue the, the package updates for that. That I can understand. But it seems to be that they're going with a slightly different model with this and or it maybe it's just subtly different. But the way it encroaches upon the user, I do not. I yeah, it's 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 a strange one for me. It's the all. Um, it it comes across as confusing. So for me, as from an end user's perspective, if I saw something like this and they see these messages coming up, and they're like, "Oh, does this mean that I have to pay for all upgrades from now on going forth, or something like that?" Um, to me, the the way they phrased it is not necessarily that clear. I get where they're coming from, but I do not think it's that clear. I think the way they 
present and word the message needs improvement because it's not very understandable for normal, non-technical people who might come across that dialogue. But at the end of the day, Canonical's a for-profit private company, private for now, at, at least, and Ubuntu is their product, so they're perfectly within their rights to do this and much worse. For all I care, they can make the desktop background a big advertisement for Ubuntu Pro. I wouldn't like that, but I don't use Ubuntu. Or they could start advertising for Amazon. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> I also, I'm not super happy. Again, I don't use Ubuntu. I don't have a stake in this, but I think the way they've implemented Ubuntu Pro, the like the model of how it works is not great. I think it was Phelan from Late Night Linux who mentioned it, but it might have been one of the other hosts. There's a company called Freesian, maybe? F-R-E-E-X-I-A-N. It's a company that specializes in Debian support and created, I think it was created by Raphael Herzog. That might be how you pronounce it. He's the person who wrote the Debian Administrator's Handbook. It's a great resource. But the way their extended support model works, if I remember correctly, is there are some packages that need to be, that need to have security fixes backported to previous versions of Debian. So they say, okay, there's this thing we need to do. It's going to take probably about this long. So we need this much money to make it happen. They don't care who pays them that money. They don't care how much individuals contribute to that pot. But once that pot is full, they'll do the work and then release those backported fixes to everyone. They'll just make it available to anyone who's has paid, who has not paid, doesn't matter. All they care about is that they have the money to do the work. And I think Ubuntu Pro would be much better if they adopted that model. But at the same time, I do also understand that they probably end up making more in the long run through this monthly subscription model rather than one-off sprints, sort of. Uh, Mike, any closing thoughts? Um, not really. I'm kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm undecided on this. Like the, uh, there is somebody in, uh, there, there, the OMG Ubuntu article, uh, quoted somebody from Canonical and they were saying, well, if you are running WordPress from our, from our university post, wouldn't you want to know that there is a vulnerability and that there is a pathway for you to get it fixed? Uh, you know, wouldn't you want to know? Because if you if you switch that off, uh, what you get is a set of packages that are going to get updated, and you might notice that your uh, universe package is not getting any updates, or you might not. If you if you run the updater and you see that it suggests packages that uh, that would be getting updates if you had that service enabled, uh, that might be beneficial for you. Now, yeah, I don't know. I still I'm I'm not decided what to think about that. I mean, the, the, the enterprise support model is, which is sort of what you're describing there, is long established. It's, it's, it's nothing new. And I have no objections to, to it, uh, whatsoever. It is because I'm not in that position. I'm not in charge of a, a corporate IT department or not, or even a small, like you described, let's say, a public library or something where they're deploying, um, computers for the community for people to use uh, a, an internal WordPress site or something like that. Once once you get to a certain level of scale, it would make sense. They're like, okay, if if you if you want support, then pay for the support. But it's my my objection to this would be again, uh, I, I I'm using this as an example, which uh, Michael, you've objected to me in the past. But imagine a very non technical user, somebody's granny who who literally just clicks on Chrome and goes oh, like, "Oh, I get to see my so my son's photographs. That that's fine. That's all I use my computer for." What is this uh, message that is coming up that's asking me for money for software updates? It's in that sense, it's not very clear. It's what I'm what I'm saying. That's the problem, right? So 
I don't, I, I threw in uh, WordPress as the example that's quoted in the article, but necessarily it's not WordPress. It can be anything like there's so yeah. much stuff in that, in those repos and it can be something that you use on your personal computer. It doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to be running a service for anybody else. You might just be using your computer as a gaming desktop and there might be a package from universe that you pull. Now, the example of the grandma that looks at, uh, looks at it, that person, so basically to me, that person probably shouldn't be having anything from universe installed. If I understand how the idea of Ubuntu kind of is, is that if you were using a computer for something so basic, like uh, you know, running Chrome and, and emailing your kids, then probably you should have everything just from the main and maybe the restricted repos, but you shouldn't have anything from universe. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. In which case, it's a good idea. That it would be good to know if you would still see the adverts in it because you know on on one hand yeah you are absolutely right there shouldn't be anything in something as important in a pack as a package manager to confuse especially people who are not sure right what they are doing right then somebody did quote it there saying that their dad was running ubuntu and called them because they got confused like how is it how is it possible that i can't select these important updates so it could be definitely many, but I think it could be managed in a way that people who don't have any uh, any of these packages don't see this advertisement. Like, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's still it's still a tough call. I would definitely want to know that a package that I have has a security update and that I'm not getting it. I would like it to know definitely. Like that's that's one hundred percent. How you explain it to people without making them more confused is a different matter, right? Mm. Uh, I would like to be given the choice. Uh, to make an informed choice whether I want to sign up for uh, for Ubuntu Pro, uh, which it's not necessarily you know a question of money. It's it's free for some amount of computers, I guess. So uh, yeah, they say for, free free to, for up to five machines. So 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 you know, I, without making it sound like too much like a Ubuntu advertisement, but like it, I think is the messaging that's the problem. Like firstly, a lot of Linux users are gonna be annoyed if they see any announcement in the package manager, like. To people who are used to checking uh, vulnerability databases, checking advisory notices, checking uh, checking what the updates are actually about, and to people who are used to looking after their packages after what's installed on their system, this is a superfluous shit that shouldn't be there. On the other hand, the people who could f benefit from it are anecdotally getting confused and angered. So I think. The messaging is definitely mismanaged there. I think I'm not sure. As I, again, I didn't. I wasn't able to reproduce it. I uh, I saw it in the welcome screen, and but anyway, uh, I didn't see it in the package manager, and I only saw it in the in the command line one. And I guess that's there. I don't know. But then you know, I know what it's about, so it's it's kind of different. Yeah, I'm do um, while you're just speaking there, I was just looking at the screenshot, which you included in the notes, and it says, uh, upgrade this machine to uh, Ubuntu Pro, Pro for security updates on a much wider range of packages until 2032. And it goes into more technical detail, which, uh, yeah, yeah, and then free for up to five devices. The two options are enable Ubuntu Pro, skip for now. Skipped for now, just from just from a user interface point of view, just seems like kicking the can down the road. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah fine, stop annoying me. Yeah. Um, if if it is at the if it is the case of if you come to a point where it's like, okay, you're using this LTS, this LTS has, has finished its four years of support. Uh, sign up for Ubuntu Pro to continue updates on this on this. Uh, version of Ubuntu or however they want to phrase it and one of the options is or upgrade to the new LTS and you can continu continue on for another four years for free that would be a, a valid option I, I would think I think it's five years but yeah your point is yeah valid. yeah yeah. Uh, uh, yeah it's it's more even within the first five years like you get uh, there are packages that you might not be getting security updates for I guess it's it's all too complicated even I had to look up what the actual different repos are in Ubuntu. Um, yeah, it's a bit, the messaging, the, so the, what I put in the show notes is the, it's like the welcome screen after you install uh, LTS Ubuntu, this is the first screen that you get, uh, or one of the, you know, the welcome window, and it's maybe number two, number three, I don't know, right? Uh, I, I would say upgrade this machine to Ubuntu Pro security updates on a much wider range, you know, that kind of thing, it doesn't, it's a marketing thing, and mm. I think that when it comes to security updates, we should tone the marketing down and just uh, 
be very extremely clear and straight and uh, yeah. you know but then that's not how capitalism works so um, you know that's that's not how my, uh, how how anything works so that's that's a problem in other news uh, i've been poking and prodding i won't say using exclusively but i've been using it a decent amount there is a new well i don't know how new it is but it's new to me um firefox fork called Florp, I want to say. It appears to be developed by a Japanese company and it's it's kind of uh Firefox but uh it's don't know if it's subconscious, but it seems to be faster than Firefox for some reason to me. It has like some nice things like it has its own theme and you can also uh ap- apply previous uh Firefox themes. So if you didn't like a the UI direction or the teaming direction that Firefox has gone in lately. There's options in the Florp teaming to just go back to the way it was before. So for people who like that, that's good. Um, it uh, unlike things, uh, and it they do say that they have like sensible extensions enabled by default and uh, it's secure by default and everything like that. But unlike LibreWolf, is like we're a Firefox f- fork, but we're more secure. Unlike that, it actually supports uh, Firefox Sync. Have you, have you guys any um, exposure in, with Florp, or have you tried it out? I'd never heard of it until just now. I, uh, I've i only seen it when you put it in the notes, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, for a habitual distro hopper such as yourself, uh, having a browser sync is kind of essential. Yes. I don't his distro hop all that much, but uh, I've been having to re- install a bunch of virtual machines, and uh, yeah, no, I can't, like, I can't imagine not using Firefox Firefox Sync. Um, Yeah. And this is interesting, but I'm not so... I like Firefox probably pretty much the way it is. I have one or two major issues with it, but yeah, no. This looks a bit like like somebody looked at Vivaldi and thought, maybe I want something that is Firefox, but a bit more like Vivaldi, which is not a bad thing. I like Vivaldi. Yeah. That that could also be subconsciously why it was speaking to me as well because I also do like Vivaldi. It looks like they took inspiration from some of Vivaldi's features. Yeah, I like the sidebar and the vertical tabs. They look nice. And the the like stacked tabs in the top bar is interesting. I don't know that I would like it or use it, but it's interesting. Yeah, it's definitely good that people are uh, experimenting with uh, and inventing new elements in a browser UI and UX because that is the most used application, at least for me, is the browser. And uh, that, that definitely can do with continuous improvements. The article does call out something. It says, quote, Florp also has something called Florp View that lets you sync tabs from your other linked devices, such as smartphones using a Mozilla account. The article, the way that's worded, implies that it's a feature specific to Florp, but it's not. It's at the very least present in version 123. But that is something from upstream Firefox that it already has. Firefox view, uh, open tabs from other devices and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm I'm running the distribution version of Firefox, which is which is 122.0 on Linux, and that has it. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah, that completely makes sense from the wording of it because they say you can use this floor f- uh, feature that speaks to your Mozilla account. I'm like, why Why would it be an exclusive floor f- feature if it's using the Mozilla uh, account? Yeah. yeah. So I was also bit, um, been checking out Thorium as well. So that's the Chromium-based browser that I have open. I will briefly say I've been messing with Hyperland. It's a featureful, eye candy full Wayland compositor. And it's been a super wonderful experience. I love the animations. It has touchpad gestures like Mac OS for swiping between workspaces. That's something I've always wanted ever since using it on Mac OS. And Hyperland has it, and it's been great. Finding Wayland equivalents to X software has been annoying a little bit. It's been fine for the most part. There are good equivalents for the most part. But like screen capture tools... There's, I haven't found anything as good as Flameshot, 
Flameshot is supposed to support Wayland, but I haven't gotten that working yet. Maybe it's on my end, I don't know. The other screenshot tools I found have not been great. Yeah, I've also experienced that as well, that um, Flameshot works in X and kind of, sort of, works in Wayland, but not quite. Uh, when I was on Wayland and Gnome, um, Flameshot would just hand off to the uh, default inbuilt one in Gnome, which I believe is Gnome Snapshot. That's by default. Uh, anything in anything in Gnome will do that because Gnome developers decided that that is the way. Of course, that does not surprise me at all. Uh, as, as far as I know, uh, any screen capture tool in Gnome is, at least for now, going to be a two-step thing. Uh, Unless it's Gnome sh- Snapshot, and probably then it's a one-step. One step. If it's the one that's built in Gnome, then yeah. For, uh, for me, I just, uh, I'm just i now using Spectacle because that just is built into KDE and has all of the features that I, I want. Uh, was Mainly was using in uh, Flameshot as well. Flameshot has very good annotation features and Spectacle has not quite the same amount, but still has uh, pretty decent annotation features as well. Uh, also, uh, with Spectacle, I can, I can set up a custom keyboard shortcut for um, drawing a snip rather than um, capturing the full screen. So I just use the keyboard shortcut, draw the snip, and it cop- copies it to my clipboard. And Shift Command 5, yes. I have, uh, yeah, Flameshot, it installs and everything, but unfortunately, because I have fractional scaling on my laptop, it basically, you make a screenshot and the uh, actual whole screen turns up to be like i don't know a fraction of the screenshot ba- of the screen basically it's it's mm-hmm. weird uh, i don't know if some, that's something i can fix or if it's just waiting for more dev work not sure now i have not tried gaming on wayland i don't have super high hopes for it but i just wanted hyperland to, to be like a pleasant place to work so not being able to game is a good thing. Not even trying to game is a good thing, too. I'm just going to leave that for X for now. And I've also heard that the Hyperland community is pretty crap. I've also heard that the creator of Hyperland is pretty crap. I don't remember all of the details. Some of the context is probably forgotten, but from what I remember, something happened with moderators, maybe the creator, changing the name and pronouns of one of their, one of the community members without their consent. I guess they got dead named and, uh, one second. Oh, 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 you know what I'm going to do? That is a, that it was a Drew Devolt. Drew Devolt looked into it and he has a thing on his blogs from last September. So I'm just going to link to his uh, his article for the show notes to give context. There's a lot of text here, so uh, I think there was a bit of a back and forth between him and the lead dev on of Hyperland, and the whole thing was about well, I don't want to moderate the all because I don't want to create a code of conduct and do the world saying you should and so on. So yeah, so just be aware that the community is probably something that should be avoided, but I have not interacted with the community at all. I haven't needed to. Their documentation's been pretty good. Probably a good time to uh, wrap things up. So this has been another episode of Linux Ads. Um, as always, if you want to get in touch with us, we're show at linuxlads.com. We are on Macedon, linuxlads at fosterton.org. Uh, we do have a fairly active Telegram group uh, if you want to get in touch with us there. Um, if you would like to support the the podcast, you can do so. Uh, details of which is on linuxlads.com. So until next time, say goodbye, guys. Bye. Goodbye, guys. Namaste.